Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Freehold Regional High School District Virtual College Fair, and thank you for joining us today. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. The Q&A feature is the best way for you all to communicate with our panelists. Um, the, your camera and microphone are both off, so our panelists cannot see nor hear you. This is just one of many different sessions being offered, so be sure to sign up for more. And then within about a week, you can find the same recording at stripescan.com backslash FRHSD. Thank you so much. And I'll turn it over to our first presenter from UEA. Thank you very much, Alvaro, for the introduction. So yeah, thank you. Uh, my name is Graham Wise, and I represent the University of East Anglia, better known as UEA. So I'm just going to quickly share my presentation for you now. So yeah, so this is UEA. Um, so UEA is a campus-based university located in, in the UK, in the east of the UK. Um, we are home to just over 16,000 students at UEA, of which around 4,000 are international students from about 100 different countries. So a very multicultural and a very diverse university. Uh, UEA is also a research intensive university and um, it's very much embedded into all of the programs we offer at the university at both undergraduate and postgraduate level. So I'm just going to highlight a few of UEA's key achievements now. Um, so two you, you can see here very um, clearly is the top 25 in the UK and the top 200 in the world. Um, this is just a good recognition that UEA is a, a, you know, a really good, strong university, not just in the UK, but also in the world as well. Um, what another one we'd like to mention is our teaching excellence framework. Um, so this is a UK government um, they introduce it to kind of assess the quality of teaching at UK universities and UEA is one of around 20 universities to achieve the gold award. So again, good, really, a really good recognition of the quality of teaching at UEA. So this is our campus here. And um, so as I said earlier, we're a campus-based university. So that means that all of our fan fantastic facilities are located on the Spray One site, including our accommodation, and that's guaranteed for international students in their first year of study at UEA. And there's lots of great options of um, on-campus and also off-campus accommodation, depending on what it is you're interested in and where you're interested in living. But the campus is very self-contained. We have all the facilities and amenities that you'd need and that you'd expect at a, uh, a well-ranked UK university. And we have the street, which has got lots of shops and um, restaurants and all those kind of stuff. But we have um, the medical centre and the dentist located at the foot of our campus. We have a very active student union and we have over 200 different clubs and societies that students can join. But we pride ourselves on being a very sociable, a very welcoming and inclusive university. We also have the sports park, as you can see in the top of the campus here. I'm very lucky to have this facility on our campus. Um, there's lots of indoor and outdoor sports that you can take part in during your time at UEA, both competitive and non-competitive sports as well. So one facility that I really like to draw attention to is the Sainsbury Centre for Visual Arts. Um, so this is an art gallery located at the foot of our campus. Um, so it's lots of exhibitions from all over the world um, housed in the Sainsbury Centre, but you may also recognise the building um, as it doubles up as the Avengers headquarters. Um, so we've had the Avengers filming on our campus before, so you may have actually seen UEA um, on your TV screen without actually realising it. And hopefully maybe one day they'll be back filming on our campus again in the future. So just to some less exciting things now in terms of entry requirements, but obviously far more important than the Avengers. Um, so in terms of what we're looking for, it's very much a bespoke process at UEA in terms of um, what the admissions process. Um, so we accept IBs, we accept A-levels, for students um, who have done the high school graduate diploma, we look for that for around three AP exams um, is what we kind of stand and look for. What I would say is it can vary from course to course. So if you are interested in applying, then obviously definitely check the details of the course you're applying to, and then you can reach out to myself and I can go through that process with you. Um, some courses will also require you to take an interview, usually our medicine and our health sciences courses. And obviously all of our applications are made on UCAS where a personal statement will be required. So where we're located, so we're in the city of Norwich. Um, so Norwich is in the east of the UK and we are less than two hours to London by train. We're close to the beach. So the, the closest beach is about 40 minute drive from Norwich and the city is about a 15 minute drive from campus. So the campus is slightly outside the city, but still very easily accessible by a bus. And uh, Norwich is very much a blend of the old and new. It's the best of both worlds. You know, you've got your historic castles and cathedrals, as you can see in the image here. We also have brand new shopping centres and cinemas as well. So again, it really is something for everyone in, in Norwich. It's a really great kind of um, welcoming and, and student facing city. 
it's a great city for entertainment and it's a very art, it's an arts focused city so there's lots of stuff to do lots of live music theater all that kind of stuff and it's great shopping as well and um, which is important to, to some people again most importantly though it's a very safe city very welcoming city not just for students from the uk but more so to students and um, international students as well so the programs we offer at UEA, so um, as is the case for most universities in the UK, and you know they'll they'll go through their programs later, but our degrees are three years in length. Um, the only way they'd be longer if you selected a year abroad or a placement year option, which lots of our programs do have that variant, that would then extend to a four year program. Um, our courses are very flexible and they often follow the same approach that in the first year, it's a very common first year. You'll, all the students will study the same key core modules as you move forward into your second and third year, you'll then start to choose the modules that they interest you most. It's very cost effective studying at UEA and prices range from around 17 to 21,000 pounds per year of study. And in terms of teaching, um, you can expect about 20 hours per week of contact time. So by contact time, we mean um, lectures, seminars, workshops, lab work, all that kind of stuff. Um, and the rest of the time, about 18 to 20 hours is made for independent study. Um, so that'd be researching, doing coursework, essays, that kind of stuff. At UEA, we're best known for our courses in literature and creative writing and the city we're located in Norwich, so actually the UK's first UNESCO city of literature. So it's very much embedded in the city, but also very much embedded into our university as well. Um, but we're also very strong in international development, environmental sciences, and you know, lot, lots of other programs as well. There's a real wide variety of programs that you can take at UEA. Just to touch on a few extra bits of information um, for you now. So there's lots of generous scholarships for students from the US ranging from 4,000 to 8,000 pounds per year. And again, lots of um, you know, very capacity price in terms of accommodation. And we are FAFSA accredited as well. So you can get loans that way. Thank you very much for listening. I think that's pretty much all for me. But if you do have any questions, feel free to post them in the chat, um, in the Q&A section, or send me an email. Uh, my email address is on the screen here. But yeah, thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Graham. Next up, we have the University of East London. Thank you very much. So hello, everyone. Hi from London. I hope you're having a good start to your early evening and a good evening here from, from the UK. Um, so I, my name is Annabelle Molina and I am the Special Projects Manager for the International Office and I especially deal with America's recruitment. Um, so I am excited to talk, be talking to you today about coming abroad and possibly studying at the University of East London. So a little bit about us, as is obvious in the name, we are based in London, England. Um, just to give you a bit of background, it is such a great place to study at. Um, it has everything on your doorstep. So if you're looking for you know, culture, we have it. If you're looking for career development, we have it as well. Um, and it's just one of those places, very much like New York, um, but just across the pond. And it just has everything that you could ever want. So it's a really fun place to be to be studying in. So a little bit about our university. So this, we have three campuses, but one of our bigger campuses is called the Docklands Campus and it's located right by the river. Um, so it is a, a, a gorgeous campus in that respect. And, um, and it has, it serves all your purposes even though it is quite a small campus. So you can see from the picture, uh, the big building, that's where most of the classes will take place. But we also have on this campus our accommodation facilities, as well as our sports dock. You can't see the sports dock in the photo, but it is um, part of the campus. One of the things that's really helpful as part of our campus is that we have a transport stop right outside the door. So as you can see in the photo, you'll see the circle with the train going through. That is what we call the tube, which is your subway equivalent. And it's great because if you want to get outside of campus and you want to explore the London area, you can just hop on the tube, go anywhere, and you can come right back and be right onto campus. So really great transport accessibility um, from our university. So a little bit about us, we um, started back as a polytechnic college back in the 1890s, but as of 1992, we have um, gained university status and we are now known as a modern university in the UK. 
our student population is 17,000 students, but that is our total student population, even including distance learning students. And we have about 20% of our student body um, as international students. So we do have a, a really diverse range of students from all across the world on our campuses. Now, in terms of schools, we offer a whole bunch of different programs. So there really is so, so much that you could learn with us from architecture um, to art and creative industries to business, law and hospitality. We also have three other schools which involve education, health, sport and bioscience, as well as psychology. So in terms of applying to the University of East London, if you would like to apply to us, you can apply via three ways. So the first way is you can apply directly via our website. It's a completely free application. You can also apply via the Common App or you can choose to apply via UCAS. Um, we really only recommend applying to us via UCAS if you intend to apply to multiple UK schools, just simply because if you do intend to just apply to us um, it, within the UK, then you can apply to us directly or via the Common App. In terms of an application decision and deadline, we, we work on rolling admissions. And what this means is that you'll get a decision within two to four weeks of applying. So if you're looking to come in for the September 2022 intake, then you could apply up to July 2022. However, we do recommend you apply earlier than that. In terms of duration, I'm sure that you'll hear this from the other universities, but we, we do offer a three year degree. And this is very typical within the English higher education system. And this is because we don't offer general education as part of our degrees. So if you choose to, sorry, if you choose to study psychology, you will only study psychology. You won't study English or maths or history or anything unrelated to your program of study. So in terms of tuition, the tuition is $17,000 a year, and this also includes free textbooks, and this will come in an electronic format. So in terms of entry requirements, you're looking at a 3.0 GPA, and you'll need one of the following. So either a 1070 on the SAT, a 23 on the ACT, or three AP scores of three and above. You don't need all three, you just need one of them along with your GPA. And then just a little bit about accommodation. So you'll see here on the right hand side, it's the photo of a typical US dorm. And on the left, it's, uh, it's what we can offer you. Um, so you'll get your own room, your own bathroom and shower room, and you'll share a kitchen between three to five students. The great thing about this is you'll get your own space. You'll get your own space to study. You'll also get your own, own bathroom, um, which just allows you to be able to manage your time better when it comes to studying. So it's a really nice setup that you've got in place in terms of living, um, living on campus. So just a final thing about sports. So if you are into sports, uh, we did host the Team USA at the 2012 Olympics, and we do offer competitive scholarships. So I realize that my time is up. So I'll just move to the final slide. If you do have any questions, you can email us at americasuel.ac.uk. Thank you so much for listening to me today. Thank you so much, Annabelle. Next up, we have the University of Roehampton. Hi, everyone. Sorry, let me just bring up my shared screen here. All right. Um, my name is Haley Drogas, and I am the regional manager for University of Roehampton, located in southwest London. So just a little bit about Roehampton. We were recently ranked in the top 10 London universities. And we are a very quick commute into central London from our beautiful Parkland campus. And we have a very proud um, historical uh, background and history dating back about 180 years now. And a few fun um, facts and figures about Roehampton. We have approximately 141 nationalities on campus. And of our 8,000 student population, approximately 10% of those students are um, international, but it's more so 20% if you include students from all other parts of the EU. And then we are proud to say that we have a 93% conversion of students finding work within their first 
few months of graduating. And there is so much to offer, not only on campus, but within London itself, with a thousand museums and galleries and other fun things for students to do around London, and a lot of which are free for students. So here is a quick map just to show you in proximity to central London where we're located. So we are the green building down by Wimbledon. And as I said, it's about a 20 to 30 minute bus ride or about a 15 to 20 minute um, train ride into central London. And if you scan that QR code on this screen, that will take you to our spectacular new virtual tour on our website. And the same QR code is on this slide as well for the virtual tour. And this picture just shows you a graphic of our beautiful Parkland campus. And three of our four historical colleges are located on this one. Our fourth college is a little bit of ways out of sight from um, what you're looking at on screen, but still very close to the rest of campus. And we're very proud to say that 66% of the research done on campus is considered a world-class standard. And within some of our departments, 100% of the research is considered a world-class. And here is a list of all of our undergraduate program offerings um, within our seven academic departments, which include the School of Arts, Business, Education, Humanities, the Life Sciences, Psychology, and Social Sciences. And just quickly to touch on how to apply, we are on the UCAS application. So the UK version of the Common App as I like to consider it. And of course we um, have our own free application on our website as well. So I always encourage students to utilize that for free of charge. And in terms of entry requirements, uh, our programs um, vary sometimes in terms of entry requirements, because when you apply to Roehampton, you apply directly to that program that you're interested in studying rather than applying um, just overall to the university. But um, most of our programs require between a 2.8 to 3.0 minimum cumulative GPA. And we are test optional, but still consider if you want to submit as a supplemental material. And we have just a few other programs that require additional um, requirements, as you can see. Now to quickly touch on tuition, we are quite affordable, um, not only for our tuition, but also with living expenses in the city of London. So um, roughly within US dollar equivalent, Students pay about $35,000 annually to attend our school. And I always like to remind students we have numerous scholarships available um, for you to apply to or be considered for. And we are on FAFSA. And then of course, with our bachelor's degrees being three years in length rather than four, you're saving a whole entire year of tuition and funds um, alone just from attending our school for three years. And we do have great uh, accommodations on campus and numerous options available across our four colleges and all our single bedrooms, which is great. And they, um, all of the utility bills, all of that is included and it's quite affordable. And we have a lot of different things available on campus for students to get involved. So from getting involved with the student union to playing in sports or being a member of clubs and societies, there is something for everyone or multiple things on campus for everyone. And here is a quick slide just to show you what competitive sports we have. We also have our new um, study play program with the premier football club, Crystal Palace, where you can study with us and perhaps play on their um, club team, which is a great opportunity if you are a US soccer player. And that is it. So please feel free to get in touch. I'll put my info in the chat box, but also you can scan that QR code or copy my email. Thank you all so much for your time. Thank you. And our next panelist is gonna be from Falmouth University. Hi everyone, my name is Jackie Christopher and I'm the development manager for Falmouth University. Um, I am based in New York 
And just tell you a little bit about Falmouth is that we are Creative Industries University. So if you are really passionate about the creative arts, then this is a great option for you. Um, we were established in 1902 as the School of Art and gained university status in 2012. We're a small, medium-sized university with approximately 5,000 students. However, we are the second um, largest creative arts university in the UK. Um, you will, because we are a small, medium-sized university, you will get that personalized attention, roughly 15 students per class. And we have two campuses 15 to 20 minutes apart by bus. All students can access facilities on both campuses for cross-departmental projects, which you normally wouldn't be able to do um, in the UK. Um, and we are number one in the UK for graduates starting or running their own business. And we're the second safest university in England and Wales. So if you have an entrepreneurial uh, uh, background and, and want to um, do different things, then this is a great option for you. Now, just tell you a little bit about our location. We are located in Cornwall, England. And if you don't know Cornwall, it's a beautiful touristic um, location. Um, very picturesque, quintessential British, um, with a lot of harbor, harbor villages, and a lot of students um, can do surfing, sailing, hiking, and more, which you normally wouldn't be able to do with most UK universities. It's a beachside coastal town in southwest of England. We have a very vibrant student life, especially with us being such a creative in this, um, university. And the closest airport is Newquay, which is about 40 minutes away from Falmouth approximately five hours away from London by train, and all students are, able, are offered um, a pickup service um, if they are a first year international student. And when you're living in Falmouth, it's very affordable. Cornwall is one of the cheapest counties to live in the UK. Transport and entertainment are affordable. Part-time jobs are easy to find and abundant. And when you are a student, um, you will have a student visa, which allows you to work up to 20 hours a week during term time. But during non-term time, you can work up to 40 hours a week. And, be, you know, Cornwall, there's so many different opportunities like bars, restaurants, hotels, and so forth. But if you don't want to work in town, you can all, always um, work at the university. Uh, we have cafeteria, cafes, and so, so much more. Now we have nine diverse departments um, at Falmouth and I'm just gonna show, slowly um, show you all the different programs we have available. And remember, we are Creative Arts um, Industries University, so Creative Industries. So what that means is we want to make sure that you gain industry experience as soon as you arrive on campus. So, you know, usually, with most UK degrees, you don't gain this experience until year two. With year, um, with us, with Falmouth, you gain it as soon as you arrive. And we also have workshops and so forth where you have that experience to dabble in different um, skills. You can develop your skills in, in different areas outside of your department. So that's really exciting as well. So most of our degrees are three years long, but we do have some two-year degrees where you work continuously from September all the way through the year. You won't have any spring or uh, summer breaks. Um, so if you want to even save even more money and time, you can do that at Falmouth. Um, but you know, if you want to develop your skills in the subject and, and don't feel confident, then what I, we would recommend is doing the integrated foundation year, which allows you to develop those skills in that specific subject. Our facilities are industry standard and very accessible. You're getting, um, you're getting to experience professional equipment as soon as you arrive. Um, we have on-campus art shops, two libraries, and students can order heavy materials um, to the campus as well. And because we are a creative industries university, we are a very vibrant creative community. So you have access to all different types of um, exhibitions, performances, and also, you know, our students collaborate with each other. So if you are a dance student who needs their performance to be filmed, then we have some amazing film students who um, would be able to, um, to record for you. And like I was saying earlier, we do have workshop festivals. We have two big events um, annually um, where there's, you know, list of classes that you can attend for free um, or you can just um, 
or we have them every Wednesday. And we have an on-campus um, careers and employability service from the first year up until graduation and beyond. And just to tell you a little bit about our undergraduate entry requirements, um, you know, there is no minimum GPA, but we do want to make sure that you are a good student. We want to see a personal statement, recommendation letter, but the substance, so, um, the sub substance of your application is your portfolio and then your interview. The great thing is we do not require SATs, ACTs, or APs. And we have eight different studio residences and how to apply. You can apply through us through UCAS or our own free online application. Thank you so much, everyone. And if you have any other questions, please feel free to um, write in the chat. Thank you so much, Jackie. Next up, we have Duke Kunshan University. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, things are moving a little slow on my end today. Um, thanks so much uh, to all of you for joining today. Um, I am Emily Gruby and I am from Duke Kunshan University, which is a joint venture institution that Duke University here in the US opened in China. Now I know I don't have too much time to talk to you today, so there is a QR code on each of the slides and that will link you to our virtual events page that has both um, live virtual campus tours led by current students as well as virtual information sessions um, led by members of our um, admission staff and, and those are a little bit longer than six minutes so they're able to cram in um, more information for you but definitely check those out. Um, at Duke Quinchun University, um, all classes are taught in English. You do spend most of your time in China. Um, however, you do have the opportunity to spend a semester at Duke as well during your junior year or um, at one of our other global options. Um, and when you graduate, you actually get degrees from both Duke University and Duke Quinchun University too. And I've already mentioned that it is all taught in English, um, but you do have the opportunity um, to study Mandarin Chinese when you're there as well. In fact, all international students are required to take Mandarin for at least two years once you enroll. But the majority of um, international students come in without ever having studied it before. So you may not have heard of Quinchan before. It is considered to be a small city by Chinese standards. It's still about 2 million people, which is why I use air quotes. Um, and it's right in between two major cities. So Suzhou is about the population of New York City. And then Shanghai is, of course, one of the biggest cities in the world. And you can, you can access both of those cities via high-speed rail um, in about 20 minutes. So definitely accessible. Um, and our students definitely take advantage of the location. Um, they go into both of these cities with their professors on field trips. Um, the Career Center takes students into both of these cities for career treks. And then, of course, they go for fun as well and to experience nightlife and different restaurants and all sorts of things. So it's, it's definitely really fantastic to be this close to um, the, both of those major cities. So when Duke decided to open up a school in China, they really wanted to kind of reinvent the traditional notion of liberal arts and sciences. And so we've kind of done this through a very experiential and interdisciplinary curriculum. Um, you'll see in a few slides uh, how our majors are structured. They're all blended disciplines, um, but they are housed within three distinct departments. So arts and humanities, social sciences, and natural sciences. But no matter what you're majoring in, you're gonna be taking classes in all of those areas. We have really tried to build in the experiential component by, uh, by having a four plus one academic week. So classes are just Monday through Thursday. Fridays are meant for those co-curricular education opportunities, some of which I mentioned, you know, going into Shanghai and Suzhou, um, but also like a lot of students do like research with faculty members, volunteer work. There's all sorts of um, cool opportunities to utilize those Fridays. And we also have a pretty innovative semester schedule. So we kind of have a hybrid schedule between the US and the Chinese higher education calendar. So we have um, the traditional like August to December um, semester and then you know winter break, come back from January to May. However, each semester is split into two seven week terms. So I'm sorry, yeah, two seven week sessions. So you're not gonna be taking the full like five classes you may be taking at a typical US institution. You'll only be taking about two or three classes at a time during each term. And then you do get off a lot of little breaks here and there, including Chinese holidays. Um, and our students definitely love to like use those holidays to travel around China, travel around Asia. Um, it's, it's definitely an adventurous group of students. So you'll, you won't um, lack in travel buddies. 
Um, we're a pretty new institution, so we just opened in 2013 with our graduate programs, but actually just started bringing in undergrads a few years ago. Um, and so we have currently students from over 50 nationalities represented from six continents, and they've already started over 65 student organizations that range from um, Model UN to our LGBT group to club sports to like a, a symphonic orchestra um, and so many more. And there's a lot of support for starting new student organizations as well. So I've already kind of mentioned some of these things, but I do want to um, reiterate that it is a very small student body. Um, currently, we just have freshmen through juniors, but we, um, uh, you know, just recently admitted our um, incoming freshmen, and we'll have all four classes represented. We're excited about that, um, and we have a very just overall engaging academic environment, which in, you know really helps that we have a small student body like that and a small student faculty ratio of only seven to one. We also have complete academic freedom. So if you're worried about censorship in China, that's not an issue on campus. We can talk about what we want. We can do research on what we want as well. And then um, you may have heard that websites, you know, like Facebook and Google are typically blocked in China. But again, as a joint venture institution, we actually have our um, a privilege to get our uh, internet routed from another country. So we have complete like free and open internet. So these are our majors. I'm not going to spend too much time on these, but just so you can see, um, all of our majors are underlined. And then the hollow bullet points underneath are the individual disciplinary tracks within those majors. So um, you don't declare a major till the end of your sophomore year. So there's plenty of time to explore. Um, and there's plenty of room in your schedule too, because about a third of your courses are electives. Alrighty, and then this is just a, a picture of uh, from one of our admitted student events um, pre pandemic. Um, and we just have a, a you know being built in, you know being open in 2013 we have a really new and modern campus and it is um, the only lead certified campus in China as well so we're really um, you know focused on sustainability and, and lessening our footprint. We are on the Common App. It is a free application, um, and we do have two application rounds, both in early decision and regular decision. Um, it is likely that we'll be test optional next year as we were this year, um, but definitely just check us out online um, for uh, more information about our application. But if you do apply, you'll automatically be considered for merit-based aid, and you just need, to, just need to submit your CSS profile to also be considered for need-based aid. Definitely reach out with any questions. I'll also put my contact info um, in the chat box. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. And that brings us to our last panelist to present, which is the University College Dublin. All right, it took me a second to unmute myself. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Kendall Hook. I am with the University College Dublin. I know in the registration, it says that we were part of the UK, um, but we are actually not a part of the UK. Um, Northern Ireland is um, a part of the UK. The Republic of Ireland is not, but we are on the same island. So same island, two different countries. So I will um, highlight a couple of differences between us and um, what some of my friends here mentioned from the UK and about um, some of the differences about the academic system. Um, but again, my name is Kendall and um, I work with all of our Mid-Atlantic students, but I am based in New York. So I'm not sure if you have been to Ireland or been to Dublin yourself, um, but Ireland is an incredibly safe, friendly, and welcoming country. It's often ranked in the top 10 to 12 safest countries in the world, according to the Global Peace Index, and it's often ranked as the world's friendliest country, according to travel magazines. Um, but for being such a small country, it is very globally connected, multicultural society. So you have people from all over the world coming to Ireland for school, um, to live, um, and for work as well. So Dublin itself is actually the EU headquarter capital. Um, we are a member of the EU. Um, <clears throat> so you have companies like Google, Facebook, Link LinkedIn, Airbnb, um, major companies, mul major multinational um, companies that have their headquarters in Dublin. So that makes for a great opportunity to network, whether that's for internships or for jobs after graduation, whether in Ireland or in the US. Um, coming to Ireland for school, you are eligible to stay back for up to a year um, to seek employment after graduation. 
Um, all of Ireland's degrees are internationally recognized, so you can bring them back here to the US, whether it's for work or for um, graduate school applications without a problem. Um, Dublin itself is incredibly youthful. I think about half of Dublin's population is under the age of 36 or so. So it's incredibly youthful, vibrant, great nightlife, great art scene, great business center, um, but it's not overwhelming in size. It's easy to navigate, um, it's walkable, um, but you have all the benefits of being in a major European capital city. A little bit about University College Dublin or UCD. Uh, we are founded in 1854, so we are one of Ireland's oldest universities. Um, but you can tell from my background here and this photo on the slide <clears throat> that we don't look very old. Um, we are actually located just about two and a half miles south of Dublin city center, the downtown area in what's known as the embassy district. So it's a really beautiful, lovely, more residential area of the city, um, but you can get from campus to downtown in a matter of just a 20 minute. Belfield campus in the 60s or so. So we have a relatively modern campus. Our size is about 30,000 students. And of that 30,000 students, about 30% are coming from outside of Ireland. So we have hundreds of US students on our campus every year. So you would not be the only US student from, um, from, from your state. Um, we have lots of students coming from nearly every 50, um, nearly all of the 50 states. Um, UCD was ranked the number one university in Ireland again, which we're really proud of. Um, and we have a range of degree programs as well, which I will um, talk about in just a moment. We have a very familiar campus. Um, we have the typical amenities that you're used to here in the US. So we have excellent gym facilities, student life center, um, different libraries for different academic disciplines, um, career support services um, to help you with job placements after graduation, tutoring, disability and lifelong learning support center, et cetera. Um, we have a very vibrant student life as well. So our student center is the hub of all of that activity. We have over 130 clubs and organizations. Uh, I actually just learned that UCD um, has over 70 soccer teams, which is insane. Um, but those clubs and societies are really the best way to plug in, find your place and your friend niche for the time that you're there. We do have on-campus housing available and we guarantee um, housing on campus for all of our first year international students. Um, so you don't have to commute to class. Um, you just have to walk from residences to um, the main academic buildings in the center of campus. Um, but you get your own bedroom, typically old, ba old bathroom, <laughs> own bathroom as well. Um, and you'd share common facilities like little living area and kitchen with typically three to four other students or so. And those students are coming from all over. So you can, um, your suite can be shared with Irish students as well as students from China, New Zealand. Um, you know, students are coming from over 154 different countries. We have a range of degree programs, A to Z, I say architecture to zoology. Um, these are the overarching colleges that our programs fall into. Um, we do have some three-year degree programs, but I do wanna highlight that a majority of our students are on campus for the full four years. Um, some of the popular programs include English literature, political science, biology. Um, you, can, you can apply to medicine, vet med, law as an undergrad, um, sustainability program. Those are some unique ones. We do have a liberal arts and sciences program. If you are unsure what you want to do, that would be a great way to try out different subjects before committing to what you want. Um, we are on the Common App, and we do offer international student scholarships, and we do accept U.S. federal aid. So if you have any other questions, you are always welcome to email me. Um, I will pop my email in the chat as well, and I appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Kendall. So folks, we have wrapped up the presentations, but we're going to switch over into a uh, Q&A session. So I'd love to invite back all of our panelists. Um, and we are gonna go in the same order as we presented. Um, and we're gonna start with the first question, which is what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And that is gonna be from UAE. 
Thanks, yeah. It's always good going first because I can get my answer and make sure nobody steals the same thing. So what I would say, and I'm sure everyone's probably going to say the same thing anyway, but um, I think my best advice now is to make the most of all of the kind of virtual content that universities are putting out right now, um, more so than they would in any academic year. There's lots of kind of virtual campus tours and um, webinars like these. There's um, lots of kind of virtual sessions where you can meet one to one with staff members or academics or current students. So I say right now, um, yeah, just make the most of all of the kind of excellent virtual opportunities there are and um, that the universities are giving you. Thank you, Graham. Next up, we have the University of East London. Thank you. I would say that really just do your research. Um, a lot of the time, choosing maybe a option outside the box can be sometimes the best thing. And, um, and don't get swayed by where your friends are going, because the reality is, is that you're going to make so many friends when you go to university, you're always going to be making friends. So really choose what's right for you rather than what's right for you and your friends, at, you know, at this time. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Next up, we have the University of Roehampton. Thank you. Um, I always like to say, make sure to not be afraid to ask questions. That's what, you know, we're here for as representatives of the universities. We're here to help guide you, um, answer any questions you have. And also, um, don't be afraid to ask questions in regarding financing, scholarships. There are so many opportunities or options out there for students, um, and a lot of scholarships go unused. So definitely do your research and don't be afraid to ask. Thank you, Haley. Next up, we have uh, Falmouth University. Great, thank you. I, there's two things on my end. Uh, the first is don't get overwhelmed. I know this is a very stressful process and there's a lot of different steps. Um, and secondly, if you're very serious about the UK, definitely ask many, many people who are in the industry what the processes are like, what are you, what are you looking for? Um, we, you know, there's, um, you know, guidance counselors, they have a lot of access to different resources about studying in the UK. But yeah, just even generally, reaching out to your guidance counselor and asking questions will really help. Thank you, Jackie. Next up, we have Duke Kinshaw University. Thanks. Yeah, and I, I definitely echo everyone else. And I just um, want to point out to, to be open minded. Obviously, you guys are pretty open minded if you came to a international college session. But I, I also want to encourage you to, to stay open minded through um, all parts of the process, um, particularly when it comes to finances. I know sometimes it's really easy to assume that going abroad will cost more than um, a college here in the U.S. And, and that's often not the case. I know some of um, my fellow panelists have talked about cost of living being a factor. And I know in China, it's significantly cheaper to, to live. So costs like housing and meals and things like that are less expensive. So look, look at all um, angles and, and stay open-minded. Thank you, Emily. Um, and then last up is gonna be the University College Dublin. Yeah, everyone has had great advice. Um, I would say um, since many of our schools um, do have direct entry programs, meaning you apply to certain programs. Um, it could look that it could look like many of us have the same the same offerings, um, but really take a look um, and see how how the classes are taught and what is taught, because when you actually look at the breakdown of programs, that's where you will really see a difference. So that could help you decide as well. Awesome. Thank you, Kendall. Um, and then that brings us to uh, the end of that question, um, which is really fun. I thank you so much for the advice um, in that process for our audience. Um, but this question is also equally as fun to get to know a little bit about culture on campus. So we'll go in the same order. And I'm curious from UEA, UEA um, what is your favorite event or tradition that happens on campus? I'll be real quick because I know we've only got half minutes left. So my favorite tradition is Pimp My Barrow. So it's a tradition where um, university students at UEA, they pimp a wheelbarrow and they dress up in fancy dress. They do a kind of a pub call through the campus and then through the city and they have to pay money to enter and it all goes to charity. But it's a really great, colorful event with um, everyone having a great time. And yeah, you can see students going a mile away in all their fancy dress outfits with their wheelbarrow. So that's probably my favorite event on campus. That sounds super fun. Um, next up, we're going to have the University of East London. Yeah, thank you. So we have a really lovely tradition in the winter. 
Um, there's something called Winter Wonderland and we have our own mini Winter Wonderland on campus. Um, so we have a Ferris wheel and we have like just everything wonderful that's winter related. And uh, we just make it really fun to kind of welcome in the, the Christmas time. So I would say that's our best tradition. Great, next up we have the University of Roehampton. So one of my favorite things on campus at Roehampton is that similar to in Harry Potter, how every academic year, all four houses compete for a house cup. We have the same thing with our four colleges called the College Cup. So all four colleges compete and depending which program your, um, I'm sorry, which college your program is under, your college could win every year. It has the opportunity to, so pretty fun. Yeah, super neat. Um, next up, we have Falmouth University. Yeah, so we have an event um, in the beginning of the semester when students arrive on campus. It's called Freshers Week, where all the students get to meet each other. Students can register for clubs, societies. There's tons of events going on, a lot of fun activities. Great, thank you, Jackie. Um, next up is Duke um, Kunshaw University. Thanks. Um, I think one of my favorite events is our international admitted student experience. This is something that's actually for admitted students, um, but it really brings all of our campus together. And so we'll we'll bring um, in, in non-COVID times, we'll bring all of our admitted students over to China to kind of have a whirlwind weekend and sit in on some sample classes and, and just you know decide for yourself if moving to China and coming to DKU is the right fit for you. So that's, that's definitely my favorite event. Great, thank you, Emily. And then we'll wrap up with the University College Dublin. Yeah, I would say that it's something called the colors match. Um, that is traditionally a big rugby game between UCD and our friendly sports rivals down the road um, in Dublin. It has since spread to other sports. Um, so any match between UCD and that school is called the colors match. But it started with rugby um, and it said that if you win the colors match, you have had a successful season. Great, thank you so much. And it feels like the 45 minutes went by so fast. So I do want to start off by saying thank you so much to our panelists for sharing all the fantastic things about their institution um, and our audience for being here and just exploring your options. Um, a couple of final thoughts before we close out this event. Um, once you close this window, there's going to be a very short four question survey and we'd appreciate any feedback that you could provide from us. As I mentioned at the beginning, there's more sessions to be offered. So be sure to sign up for more. And in about a week, you can find the same recording at strifescan.com backslash F-R-H-S-D. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a great evening, day, wherever you are right now. Bye-bye.